Hello, good day. My name is AJ Goldsby. I'm a life master from Pensacola, Florida, and today I wanted to bring you a pretty short video uh, on an interesting game. Um, this game kind of fell through the cracks. I discovered it, uh, it just laying in a file. It was in in my um, file for the website, but I had never done anything with it. Never finished formatting the web page, and so I decided that I would go ahead and clean it up and post it, and uh, want to go ahead and use it. It's a game that was the problem of the day for Thursday, September 3rd, 2009. Obviously that was six years ago, but like I said, I never finished formatting the web page for whatever reason, and um, I wanted to go ahead and post this game. Let's go ahead and jump right into the game. This is the game Stanislav Savchenko versus Alexei Ivanov. Uh, this is from the Masters Open in Vienna in 1991, and like I said, this was the chess game's problem of the day in 2009. So we're going to jump right into the game. D4, knight of 6, C4, E5. Uh, this is the Budapest Gambit. Like I said, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in analysis in this video. I would like to keep the video short. And basically, I have a web page for this game. So any questions you have, hopefully, will be answered on the web page. So we're just going to run through the game with just some brief commentary. D takes E5. That's the best move for white. Knight G4, that's the pretty much the standard move for black. E4. Now there are several lines where you try to keep the pawn. In this game, basically white's going to just simply return the pawn and try to get better development. Knight takes E4, F4. That's a, a, a kind of a radical line there. There's several different ways to go. You can see my webpage for more analysis. Knight at e, C6, Knight F3, Bishop C5, Knight C3, A5. Uh, that was kind of interesting. Bishop D3, Queen E2, Bishop G4 here. That's a standard line there. That's nine bishop g4. This is one of the main lines. It's in MCO. It's in Power Book. It's in several different sources, several books I found on the uh, Budapest. So it's a standard move, but yet at the same time, I'm thinking it's maybe not the best move. Again, I analyze this game with a bunch of different engines uh, Toga, uh, Stockfish, Houdini. Deep Fritz. I originally analyzed it with Fritz 11. I could go on and on here, but you get the general idea. I've looked at it with more than one engine, so I'm fairly confident of my analysis. And I do that because some engines have different styles, like uh, Fritz is kind of analytical, uh, Junior's kind of sacking, High Arcs is positional. I mean, I could go through the whole list, but every uh, program has a slightly different sort of aim for its for its program you know obviously all of them want to be the best but you know some of them have a different sort of flavor if you will and so that's why i'd like to use different engines but anyway bishop g4 is one of the main lines for black it's in the power book it's in all the the different databases so it's a standard line for black but i'm wondering that it's not maybe not the best line for black because white gets an edge no matter what black does from here so i was thinking maybe simply nine castles might be a little better Bishop e3, knight d4, that's, again, an over-anxious move. Uh, queen f2, knight takes f3 check. Again, that might have been, maybe just retreating the knight to knight e6 check was a little, I mean, just not a check, rather, but just knight e6. Simple calm retreat might have been the better move. And uh, rather than this exchange here on f3, that's white takes with a pawn, and now black's got to lose time, and it also strengthens white center. Uh, bishop takes e3, queen takes e3. Queen h4 check, king d2. And now black goes back to bishop e6. Uh, bishop d7 was forced here according to all the engines. Black plays bishop e6, f5. Uh, bishop to d7, knight d5. And, um, you know, now white's got a very large advantage according to all the engines. It's plus over a line, king d8, pretty much forced. I mean, there's, we can get into computer analysis of this all day. Every move there's computer analysis of the turn, but... Anyway, um, rook to rook d, or yeah, rook at a8 to to g1, and now bishop c6, and now rook g4. And now here, white can just grab the pawn on g7, and that might be the best. Why he didn't do that, no clue. But he decided to play rook g4 first, queen h5. Now knight f4, queen h6, or hg1. The nice part of this is white avoided an exchange on d5, and also mobilized all his pieces, but. Most of the engines prefer the simple, just pawn capture on g7. Of course, engines are very materialistic. Queen f7, now white goes ahead and captures the pawn. Uh, as a side note here, white might, black might could have saved his g-pawn by playing g6, but that leaves the queen kind of totally out of play there. 
But anyway, queen f6, rook takes g7, queen takes b2 check, bishop c2. King e1 might have been the best move, according to Fritz and several other engines. But uh, bishop c2. And now uh, white, black plays knight d7. Now here white had a very interesting possibility of knight e6 check. And a lot of the guys on the, uh, this game, as, as I already said, was posted on the chess games website as a problem of the day. And several guys mentioned and, and sent me emails and stuff, said knight e6 check was just flat out winning. And uh, I'll look at that maybe later, but right now I just cover that that is a possibility there. But white instead in the actual game played queen c3, queen takes c3, king takes c3, king e7, h4, knight e5, rook at one to g3, king f8, knight h5. Black plays knight g6 here. That was an attempt to, to uh, trap white's rook, but f4, um, rook e8, king d4 protecting the e pawn, b6, f6. Bishop b7 and now f5. And that may not even been the best move there. Maybe rook g4 was slightly better. But I'm just trying to get to the main position here. Knight e5. I'm going to scroll down here a little bit so I can just see my own analysis here. Knight back to f4. Bishop c6. Bishop d1. X clam. That was a good move. And now black played rook b8. Maybe uh, better was just rook c8 passive defense. Rook b8. And... Uh, Let's see, are we getting to the actual bones of the position here? Yeah, and here is white played bishop h5. Now here white had another cr cruncher. Again, the possibility of knight e6 check might have been just flat out winning for white. And again, that's explored both on my webpage and on the uh, chess games page. for the Chess games has a page for this, and kibitzers post their analysis there. A lot of different people posted analysis of that possible move there. So I would just refer you to my webpage and to that webpage also, the Chess Games webpage. But knight e6 was a distinct possibility. But anyway, white played bishop h5, and now black played bishop e8, bishop to e2. And now black, for some reason, just uh, he basically commits suicide. He's down material and, and has a terrible position. His rook's locked in the corner, this black rook here. Doesn't look like it's ever going to see the light of day, but um, black plays b5. And uh, actually, I think uh, Black might have been a lady player. So he, saying he, I was just saying that in the generic sense. Um, wasn't trying to insult the ladies here. Please don't take offense at that. I was just using he as an opponent in the very generic sense, not in the actual sense. Black played b5 here, trying to get a freeing pawn break. But all that does is set himself up for a smash. And I believe now we're going to see the winning move. And this was the whole reason... Well, white first plays c takes b5, and black plays bishop takes b5. I, I guess black thought it was okay to recapture the pawn, I mean the bishop there, you know, take the pawn back with the bishop, but that was the uh, mistake. And now we've reached the uh, position in the game that I wanted to get to. Again, we could have spent tons of time analyzing all the various possibilities in this game, and there's literally, it's fun game to look at with a computer. I mean, I encourage you, if you're an analyst and you lean in that direction, to please get out your favorite chess engine and download a PGN copy of this uh, game from the chess game website and just jump in and start analyzing it. You're going to have a ton of fun and you'll probably learn something along the way too. But uh, anyway, this is a game where you know there's just a myriad of possibilities every single move. And if I explore every single one of those, you know, this video would be several hours long and I probably still wouldn't cover everything and I don't want to do that. But anyway, now we have the basically the position for the chess game's problem of the day. And, uh, you know, here, uh, I'm going to stop talking here in a second, and I'm going to pause the video. And what I want you to do is try to figure out, take, take as long as you want, take five or ten minutes, and see if you can't guess what the winning move is here. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Okay, I paused the video, and hopefully you did, did as well. And uh, if you tried to guess the move, you might have tried to guess the move here for white. You know, and there's a couple of actually interesting moves for white. I thought the, uh, the actual move, winning move here, was quite shocking. The winning move is rook takes f7 check. That's a, an x clam, maybe even a double x clam move. Very surprising move, very interesting move. Um, you got to play knight takes f7. If you don't play knight takes f7, you get mated. Again, I'm going to refer you to my webpage for the, for the analysis of this move. But anyway, knight takes f7 was forced. Knight e6 check, king e8. Bishop takes b5 check. Rook takes b5. Knight takes c7 check. King d7, knight takes b5, rook b8, a4, king c6, and now rook c3 check. Now here black resigned, for example, let's say he plays k3, 
king to b7, let's say, then rook c7 check will win the knight. Black's totally busted here. I mean, there's no point in even trying to, to analyze this position. You know, white's up two pawns. Probably is going to win more material. All of his pieces are playing. None of black's pieces are playing a significant, um, you know, role in this game. And uh, the computers confirm it's an overwhelming position for white, so there's no pl point in, in continuing. Here black threw in the towel, and it was... It was um, deservedly so. Just to comment on the ratings, at least at the time this game was played, I haven't checked what their current status of ratings is, but the FIDE or FIDE ratings for these two players, Stanislav Savchenko, at the time that this game was played, was rated 24.85, and Alexei Ivanov, uh, I believe that's a lady player that was playing this game, but uh, if not, my apologies. But anyway, the, the black player playing the black pieces here was Alexei Ivanov, and that, and that player is rated 2380. So uh, all in all, it was a very interesting game by two fairly significantly rated players. I mean, they're not fish. They're rated nearly 20. Well, one's over 2400 feet, 80. The other one's 20 points shy of 2400 feet. 80. So very strong players. It was a very interesting game. Lots of possibilities every single move. And it made a very interesting problem for the problem of the day. And I thought you'd have fun looking at it. That basically concludes my video. I wanted to keep this video under 10 minutes. I didn't succeed. Right now it's about 11 and a half minutes long. So I'm going to conclude there. But just want to thank you for watching my video. Let you know I do have a web page for this game. And that I'll provide that link on the under the little box underneath the YouTube video which says show more. If you like my videos and appreciate you know my making videos and making good web pages and trying to do the very best that I can and bring you the very best in analysis and that kind of thing and would like to support my efforts in bringing more web pages and more chess videos to YouTube, then please go to the PayPal website that's www.paypal.com and make a contribution under my email address, which is lifemasteraj at yahoo.com. Thank you for watching the video and have a great day.